Hey everybody, it is Taylor of Summerdale Soul here. Thanks for joining me again. I'm working on my mom's R107 Mercedes again. It's the 380 SL, it's an 83. As you saw earlier, I posted the brake pad swap for her, but unfortunately during the process, found out her two rear calipers were very, very leaky. So what I'll be working on today is swapping those out and hopefully getting her on the road real soon. Y'all know the drill. First, I'm going to start on the rear calipers by removing these tiny little hairpins. Next, you're going to want to find a teeny tiny little pin like I have here. Thankfully, I have lots of little rivets left over from my Exocet project, so this was perfect for that. Gently tap those out and make sure to not breathe any dust that comes off of those. I forgot I need to return Thor's hammer. I did not need to use that big of a mallet on this. Next, I wiggled these out. If yours are anything like my mom's, they're going to be pretty rusty, so just take some time, get some grip, you'll get them out. Both alarmingly and thankfully, these pins are pretty easy to pinch and remove. Next I wiggled the replacement brake pad out of there that I put in to stop the seepage. You can see I left the old brake pad in because it was so covered in brake fluid that it just stuck to the caliper. That's not moving anywhere. So the next step is to loosen up this brake line here to make sure it's going to be able to come off pretty easily. It's much easier to loosen up when it's actually attached to something. With the brake line loosened up, we're busting out the old and trusty breaker bar. These bolts in here are pretty big and definitely secure, so I just was carefully trying to get those loose. And there it goes. Kind of. It took some time. And a little positioning. There it goes. No, my light. With the light back in a semi-functional place, <laughs> I attacked to the bottom bolt. Just kidding. If it happened again, I was going to throw it across the garage. With that out of the way, now I can very carefully loosen this bottom bolt. After dozens of tiny wrenches, it's ready to come out. Now I'm glad I remembered this before I took off the top bolt because you're definitely going to want to have a box or something you can prop the caliper on so it's not just hanging off by that brake line. Remove that top bolt and let it rest. Its watch has ended. Thank you for your hard work over the years, you sketchy, sketchy caliper. Now I'm prepping the new caliper, removing the plug from the brake line housing, making sure this is the right orientation. You're going to see how I'm comparing this. I'm going to make sure it's that right rear caliper in my instance, so just make sure you've got the right one. So full disclosure, this is going to be the messy, I'm not worried about the new paint on my new calipers way to do it. I'm unplugging this with all the fluid in the system and literally just spinning this around, trying not to drop it and trying not to spew brake fluid just everywhere. Thankfully I caught this one a little bit quicker than the other one. I'm glad I didn't film the other one. It was so shiny and new, and in a day it's gonna be corroded like the other one. Curse you brake fluid, curse you. Anyway, get that as snug as you can and just kind of get this wiped down. Get anything off of yourself, off of the caliper, anything you can do to salvage this very new, poor, poor new caliper. I got this currently hand tight as best I could while it was off, but once it's mounted again, I'm gonna give it another twist. Triceps are fire! Triceps at the ready. It's time to put this thing back on. I went top bolt first because it's a little bit easier to hold steady, but you know, getting it on is a challenge regardless. She's calm on video, but in her mind. Behind me, Satan. Moving on, now I can get these a little more snug. Definitely gonna make sure I got these nice and tight. With the brake line, I went snug and a little extra turn. So the pins came installed on the new caliper, so I'm knocking these out. It's pretty neat. They've actually upgraded the hardware to match the front calipers, and it definitely feels a lot more secure. I'll show you that in a second. Tap out that second one, easy peasy. I was thankfully able to salvage the new brake pad that I installed as a stopgap in the meantime, 
And that just slides right in since the back is already greased. When installing a new pad, you're definitely going to want to make sure the back is well greased. You do not want that squealing on you. It is a terrible noise. Slide that in like that, like so. And those two new brake pads are installed. So here's that updated hardware I was telling you about. You'll notice if you've swapped your front brake pads, this is the same kind of setup. Or if you've watched my last video. But who's counting? I had to back that pin in first over the top half. And then once that's set, I had to push down with a screwdriver to get this secondary set in. Wedging that down with the flathead was incredibly helpful. It was a bit of a struggle last time I did this up front. Once you clear that little lip, it's smooth sailing. Next, you'll ask Thor if he can borrow his hammer one more time and give a couple of gentle tippy taps. Emphasis on gentle. Okay, maybe not that gentle, but maybe a little more spatially aware. I tried to make sure these got nice and flat and then I could see the pins coming through on the other side and it's set. I'm close to done, but I had to take a moment to really enjoy the rain. It was too nice. I don't know about y'all, but I immediately tagged this thing so I could send it back to get my core value. I am not trying to set money on fire. Box that up, ship it out, and get your money! Now for this step, you're going to be very careful for two different reasons. One, you do not accidentally want to over torque this bleeder valve. Make sure you're spinning in the right direction to loosen and also not twisting it too tightly when you close it. The second reason is that you're probably going to want to wait till you have someone to push the pedal with. I'm pretty sure I introduced air into the system here by bleeding this by myself. Plus with an ABS system, the car needs to be on for it to be properly bled. So be patient, wait till you have a friend who's excited about one-sided leg day. I've closed the bleeder valve for now, but I actually went back and bled the brakes properly. I've posted the video I've used below. Once everything's mounted and the brakes are bled, you are good to go. I also recommend bedding the brakes. This one's a bit of a tank, so it's not quite as practical. Gave it a good test drive, made sure it felt good, you know, just had to make sure I felt confident handing my mom the keys again, and so far so good. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. It really does mean the world to me. I hope everyone is doing well and staying healthy right now. It's crazy out there, so wishing you all the best, and I will catch you next time.